mixed marriages in Israel of Mizrahi and Ashkenazi, what made it really, those lines dis, um, almost disappear, is the fact that everyone serves in the IDF. So everyone is mixed together, and it really brings uh, the people of Israel together. And um, I think that that's something that you can get a glimpse of in Beneath the Helmet, and you can really see these human faces. You see different stories, uh, a lone soldier from Switzerland. You see an Ethiopian soldier who's struggling because he needs to support his family. You really see all different kinds of stories. And, I mean, I've already watched it three times because I participated in three different panels. And every time I, I tear up and I, 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 I get touched just by watching it. Now, your father is the former Israeli ambassador to Rome. Uh, what was it like living in Rome uh, as the child of an Israeli ambassador? Was you did your homework? I wasn't. He served there when I was already in the IDF. Oh, okay. that was the one posting okay. I wasn't taken to. Okay. But I got to visit him ten times, and it was beautiful. <laughs> so, what, what, how was Rome? What was Rome like when you were when you visited your father there? Rome was absolutely gorgeous. I was very fortunate. I got to visit my parents while they served there for five and a half years, um, and it was also amazing to see the respect that they had for my father as an Israeli ambassador and um, to see that, you know, again, in Italy there's also a lot of criticism of Israel, but I, from what I can tell through my father's eyes, they, he really managed to get to the to the highest echelons there and there was a, a candid conversation about Israel and, and to have the politicians at the time on Israel's side and that was very heartwarming. And the food is fabulous. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Well, oh, I guess speaking of food, do, do you miss like uh, Israeli street yes. food and yes. ability to get like a good falafel anytime? Um, okay, this is we need to we need to talk about something. <laughs> Israeli food is not about falafel or shawarma or even hummus, even though we have a lot and it's great. Israeli food is just. I just came back from a restaurant here in Northern Virginia. The food here is good. I'm not saying. But the freshness and the vegetables, and if I'm talking about an abundance in everything in America, I think the one thing that Israel has more abundance in is its food, especially when we're talking about vegetables and salads. And I wasn't that much of a healthy eater before I moved to America, but now I miss it immensely. Um, I really think even, I, I used to staff Birthright, and the kids used to say, where should we get shawarma? Where should we get falafel? I said, forget that. Just go into a restaurant, order a salad, or a sandwich, or a pasta, It'll be the best you've ever had, and it never fails. <laughs> well, very good. Um, and kind of on the theme of like uh, comparing um, Israel food or culture to America culture, how, how is the dating and social scene in D.C. compared to Tel Aviv? I asked you to get personal. <laughs> Did not anticipate that. If you don't, you don't, if you, you don't I want to. to okay. I want to. <laughs> I just need to think. Can I pause for a second? Yeah, or in general... Uh, no, no, I'm very happy with the question. Okay, I just want okay. a second. <laughs> okay, the dating scene is difficult regardless of where it is, from my experience, if it's Tel Aviv and if it's DC, it probably goes the same for all around the world. Um, I won't start comparing the Israeli men to the American men, although that could be a whole interview in itself. Um, as someone who is recently single, I will say that it is a challenge to be back in the dating scene and in, to, and in Tel Aviv, in D.C. especially. Uh, on the one hand, you have a lot of people who are in government and that's something that really speaks to me because that's what I've been doing for the past uh, decade, uh, working in sort of government relations. And on the one hand, you have uh, people very much engaged in those topics. On the other hand, they're very much engaged in that, so you feel a bit less time for, for the dating scene. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting, and I will say that it is a challenge, maybe even bigger of a challenge than being the director of the Israel Action Center. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, okay, well, last question. Well, this on kind of a, a bit of a humorous note. Um, I, used, I used to work at Variety Magazine out in Los Angeles, oh. and I, I wrote, occasionally wrote book reviews for them. And one of the books I reviewed uh, for Variety was a book titled Regret the Error, how Media Mistakes Pollute the Press and Imperil Free Speech by Craig Silverman and Jeff Jarvis. And in doing my research on this uh, for this interview, I came across um, a quote uh, in the book from the Sacramento Bee. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but um, here's the quote. Uh, in some editions Wednesday, this, this is the error in the correction. In some editions Wednesday, a quote with a page A1 story about Israeli troops in the Gaza Strip incorrectly described Israeli military spokeswoman Captain Noah Meyer as a senior Hamas leader. Really? Yes. <laughs> 
Wait, so, you have to explain that to me again. I missed that. That was actually, is that? Yes, in the Sacramento Bee, uh, one of the examples from this book, Regret the Era, Error, uh, was a correction that they, that they uh, put out to their readers uh, describing, I believe you, um, Captain Noah Meyer, as a senior Hamas leader. <laughs> Wow, so I've never had that. that well, what your reaction was to, what is to that. Um, my reaction is whoa. Um, well, uh, my father has taught me that it doesn't matter what they say as long as they spell your name right. Although I'm not sure I would say that about this. Um, I'm guessing that was not by, written by Zionists. Um, but uh, I was a spokesperson for the IDF, and I would love to see that and see if I can issue. A statement or something about that because that you threw me off guard there the, the Sacramento yeah. Bee did issue a correction oh they did so, okay so you are not a uh, senior Hamas leader I am not on the contrary you no. were you were the Israeli military spokesman I was the I was one of the, I was a spokesperson for the North American press in the IDF a very proud one uh, no no engaging with Hamas I am I like to think myself a centrist and and at times maybe more liberal not to that extent, in any shape, way, or form. I don't talk to people who want to kill me and my family. <laughs> okay, well, very good. Well, th well thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay.